So, new tool day. I just got a brand new laser from WeCreate, and it's jam-packed full of features. In fact, it has a lot of features that I don't have on any of my other lasers. So I'm super excited to open this up, unbox it, and review it. Let's take a look. So before we open up the auto pass through feeder, let's do the laser first and have that set up, and then we'll do this second. Cool, so there's the HD cam. That's super cool. You can see some LED strips of lighting there too. Then we have a massive 40 watt laser module there. So I unboxed everything and these are all the accessories that it comes with to actually build the laser. We have the air pump here, the air pump hose. This is the power supply to power the laser. And we also have the venting system. So these enclosed lasers now come with these venting systems. My X2S1 actually has one of these and it's fantastic. Looks like we have a screwdriver, and we have an antenna for Wi-Fi, I assume. It came with some test pieces already, and it also has the four access accessory. So it does have these jaws here that rotate so you can actually laser engrave on round objects like tumblers, rings, etc. Then we have a little bag full of tools. So everything we need, including the manual, to get started. Let's get to it. Assembly is super easy. You simply use four screws to install the actual vent, and then you just screw in the vent hose. You plug in the air assist, plug in the hose for the air assist, and then power it on. That's it. Now you can use a USB cable, but I'm actually using the Wi-Fi antenna and connecting via Wi-Fi. Your choice. So I just finished the first test print. This was a simple text, but this is so easy to use. Now, first and foremost, I'm connected via Wi-Fi. So I'm not tethered by a USB cable to the laser cutter. I'm actually connected via Wi-Fi. My computer's on my bench and the laser is back there. The really cool thing is this actually works with iOS as well. So I can bring my iPad out here and have it dedicated for that laser if I wanted to. So the other really cool thing is, is there's a camera. So right now, this is actually a camera looking at the actual basswood sheet that's in the bed, and I can autofocus very easily. So when I autofocus, the actual bed will rise and lower to autofocus on the material. So the other really cool thing about WeCreate is they offer a material matrix for pretty much everything you can imagine. So take a look at this. They have everything from leather to plastic to silicone and rubber. And the actual matrix is down here and it gives you the proper speed and power settings for all these different materials. So for example, if I were to choose metal and I were to go to stainless steel and I were to choose one millimeter, I'll confirm, I can come down here to the material settings. So I'm gonna select my actual text, click this, and I don't have to actually type in anything or prototype or do any research. I simply click what I'm looking for. So in this case, I choose the color that I'm gonna prefer for actually engraving on stainless steel. And I'll just choose 100 and it already adds the power and the speed for me. So when I back out of this, you can see the actual power setting and speed has been set up automatically. And this works for every type of material. So we create has already done the actual legwork for you. So this is a really cool piece of software. We don't have to actually perform any kind of like magic or voodoo, it just works right out of the box. Now what I'd like to do is obviously set up the pass-through feeder. So let's go ahead and do that before we get into an actual real burning project. All right, let's go ahead and unbox the We Create Auto Pass Through Feeder.
The really cool thing about this is it comes with multiple pass-through rails. So you can actually extend these rails by hooking two up together. So you simply just slide this in to the end and then secure it with the M5 screws. So you can easily make your rails much, much longer by continuously connecting multiple rails together. But you can also use multiple rails for the width as well. So if you wanted to use three rails for the width or four or five, however many you need to support your material you can use. So I ran my first piece of long test wood through the machine wanted to test this auto pass feeder. And so I got this piece of wood here, and this is 36 inches long, which is roughly around 910 millimeters. So it's quite a long piece of wood and I was able to engrave on it. So these are my first tests with engraving. I actually stopped it short right here. Again, this was a proof of concept to see if it would indeed run through the auto pass feeder. It did. It did it successfully. It did everything exactly the way I wanted it. And what we're gonna do next is flip this. We're gonna do a cut. We're gonna test it out on this piece of wood. Let's do it. done with the first cut on the long piece of wood and it came out perfectly. So I attribute this to the really great hardware and the really great software, in particular the really great software and the autofocus system. Here's one thing I did learn. The tensioning is really important. So you have to tension onto the wood so that the wood can be pushed in and out so the laser can cut it. And if your tension's wrong, you might get bad results. This was the first test cut I did and it came out perfect. That's how easy it is. But I did go beyond the recommended settings. I actually tightened it tighter. Now, there's two things I want to talk about. One, how perfect this came out. The framing came out perfect due to the autofocus system. The centering, the cuts are perfect. Everything you'd expect. And it's crazy to think that this is being fed in and out of the machine while it's cutting. And it maintains those perfect curves. So really incredible. I do have one thing to mention. Because I tensioned it so hard, as the piece was going in and out of the machine, the tensioning system was putting tension onto the actual cuts. Now, I did have mine tensioned higher than normal, but even if it was at the recommended setting, I think the tensioning systems would still push down on this material, and it cracked in two locations. It cracked here on the T. So this T got cracked because a tensioner was putting tension on it, and it cracked here on the N. And then there's a third one, there's three cuts on the H. And that's just because when the roller system is rolling in and out, it's putting tension. And these are very delicate pieces. If this had been a thicker piece of wood, it would have mattered. I don't know what I'm at here. This is probably around three mil. So that was a little bit too tight. And I'm gonna say that was my fault. But that's still something to consider. Now, one thing I would recommend for We Create to do, and it would be a total software fix, is to have it cut as it's going. So instead of it feeding in and out, which kind of doesn't make sense, it makes more sense to let it cut as it's feeding in like this. That way the tensioner never goes on top of a cut piece already. That makes more sense to me in my mind. And that would be a simple software fix, like a button you can toggle for it to either do a pass or back and forth. But in any case, this came out awesome. So what I'm gonna do next is pop these pieces out. They are perforated. And in the back, you can easily see all these tiny little tabs, like really tiny tabs. They're almost like half a mil big. It's really incredible. I've been saying it for years, lasers don't need to be more powerful and they don't need to be faster. What we need is a laser that is big enough to cut an acoustic top. So since that doesn't exist, we have the auto pass through feeder and we're going to test cutting an acoustic top. We're going to first test using plywood, then we're going to use a very, very nice kiln dried hardwood. Let's get to it.
So the acoustic top was a success, 100%. And I got it right the first try. I didn't even need to test on plywood. And what I decided to do was create a little engraving of a rosette and a bridge. That way you get a visual picture of what this looks like when it's you know completely done. Because typically an acoustic top would be just like this, right? A hole and the actual body. But just to give you sort of the impression of what it looks like this is it. Now this has not been sanded at all. This is straight off the laser. So whether you're making templates or whether you're just making the actual top or whether you're using something like this, like the negative of this, right? This is also very useful. Again, not sanded in any way, but just look at how easily it did this job. This is what we've been needing with lasers for years. And there's never been a laser big enough to actually be able to do this. And this is a dreadnought. This is not a parlor guitar. This is not a ukulele. This is a dreadnought. And this is a Gibson dreadnought. So I got the actual CAD file for this Gibson. All the parts. And I took the top and basically I used this on the laser. And it came out pretty darn awesome. Easy peasy, right? On the plywood. Let's try some hardwood now. So I picked up some nice wood for the acoustic top laser test. Now we already experimented with the plywood and this is gonna be sort of our test prototype piece. And this is from Edco Fine Woods in Canada. This was imported from Canada. This is yellow cypress and it's kiln dried. So let's take a look. Look at that. Perfect seam. I don't have to do any type of work on this. It's a perfect seam, no lights going through. That is wonderful. Just wanted to show the wood before I did the glue up. Came out absolutely lovely. The yellow cypress looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Just lovely. Perfect in every way. So I got to hand it to the wood supplier that sent me this wood. I did not have to actually joint this. All I did was do a glue up of the two panels and there's just a seamless, seamless joint. It's just so perfect. It smells lovely too. It's a great wood. I did sand the edges of this one but this has not been thicknessed yet. Now, this is what I would recommend if you're doing an acoustic top on a laser with the tensioning system of the auto pass-through feeder. Because the pass-through feeder is putting so much tension on it, you probably want a thicker wood. So right now, this is at a little over three mil, and that's perfect. Then you could run this through your drum sander if you wanted to. So, here you go. You can do acoustic tops. You can do sides. Obviously, sides are just rectangles. You can do pretty much everything on the laser. This opens up a lot of doors for luthiers. You can, with the WeCreate Auto Pass Through filter, cut acoustic tops. Whether it's on kiln dried fancy wood, or whether you just want to do templates on plywood. It's up to you. So, I'm super happy with the laser. It's going to stay in my shop, and I love knowing I have the potential for doing this kind of work. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.